So if you're a Christian, how can you be going against what I'm saying when it's in the word, the word three times? That's the other one. Yes. Right. But first, the Son of Man must suffer terrible and be rejected by this generation. So before he can even come back to save us, he had to had to suffer. He he must suffer terribly and be rejected by this generation, which he he was and he still is being rejected. Cause look, look how Christians are being persecuted. Look how Christians are being treated in this world and how they're trying to hush shut us up us Christians and shut our voice down which is our power well, it's our power is through Jesus Christ but our power is us confessing and believing and worshiping and praising and living for God you know living for Jesus that's that's what I'm talking about and that's what they're trying to uh, downplay in this in this society in my opinion when the Son of Man returns the world will be like the people were the, the world will be like the people were in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up until the time Noah entered his boat and the flood came and destroyed them all. And the world will be as it, it was in the days of Lot. So first of all, let's, let's say, okay, so things are going to continue to go as they've been going. No one, will, it, it will be a, a sudden thing. It won't be so drastic now, I know that these earthquakes and these uh, natural disasters are increasing. Sin is increasing. The famines are increasing. The diseases are increasing. Uh, everything that is described that will increase. Uh, the tsunamis, the strange tides, the, the strange tides that are happening, the tsunamis, uh, these are, you know, all signs of the birth pains. Not the end uh, yet, but the birth pain of the end. And, uh, you know, by the end of the birth pains, from what I've heard, um, is that it, it continues to get worse and worse until the day that, it, that the baby is born. You know, the birth pains, give them the comparison, that when the birth pains, you know, when it's almost time for it to hatch, which will be the Lord's, or not, you know, to the baby to come out, um, and, and Jesus coming back, you know, that's what this is saying. So it's going to get worse and worse until he comes back. It's going to be throbbing, and then it's going to be harder and harder. The contraction is going to be harder and harder. And then finally, us being saved and being with our Lord Jesus Christ, that's what's going to what's going to emerge from this situation. And so, and the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building, until the morning Lot left Sodom. Then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes. It will be business as usual right up to the hour when the Son of Man returns. On that day, a person outside the house must not go into the house to pack. A person in the field must not return to town. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. Whoever clings to this life will lose it, and whoever loses this life will save it. The night two people, hold on, let's break that down. Whoever clings to this life will lose it. If all that you live for is, is if all you live for is this is this life, and you never look to heaven, that's what he's talking about. Then you will lose your life. But if you look to heaven, and you just you live for heaven, living and knowing that you're going to heaven, you will be blessed, and you will be, and you will, okay. And whoever loses this life will save it saying you lose this this fleshly life you lose you let the Holy Spirit take you over which makes you live a holy life you know um, in God's eyes because he knows the finished product of you he knows that you're saved he knows that you're his child your son his son of da or daughter you know he knows these things he, he chose you from the foundation of the earth to do his holy holy works holy deeds in your life and we all we all cursed. We all we all cursed with the the flesh and sin and, and temptation. But our Lord Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. Died for that. That's what He sacrificed His life for, and and He sacrificed that body to get to the spirit. Now He's in the Holy. He, he's up in heaven, waiting to come back. And that's what that's what this is all about.
That's what this whole subject matter is about. Whoever clings to this life will lose it, and whoever loses this life will save it. That night, two people will be asleep in one bed. One will be taken away, and the other will be left. Now, you got it. You know it. <laughs> yeah, one will be free, one will not be free. Yeah, so uh, one will be asleep. He's giving you examples. Jesus, this is Jesus talking. This is our red letters. Our Lord Jesus, who we're supposed to follow and emulate or be like and um, and try our best to be like. You know, it's the, the want to be perfect, the, the actions to try to be perfect that makes you acceptable, you know, and that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So two people will be asleep in one bed. So two people, same place, joined together right here, and one will be taken, leaving only one, leaving only this one, because the other is taken. It was two, now it's one. Where did the other one go? They were taken, but the other one was left. They're in a bed. They're in a physical bed, a physical bed. So this is an example, a physical bed, two people in it, at this time of the day of the Lord, when, they, when, when God will come back, two people will be in the bed. One pew, taken. We said we already established 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We already established that it's going to be taken. We're going to be taken in the clouds, the rapture, before, <coughs> before the Antichrist takes over his, <coughs> excuse me, takes over his, his reign as, as, uh, as the leader of this, this whole world, the world, one world government for seven years. And uh, that's Revelation chapter 13, um, Daniel chapter 12, Daniel chapter 7. Uh, like I said, it's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's, it's all over the Bible. It's an antichrist now that, we, that we've been telling you about. And they say in John, in uh, the letters of John, first, or, I believe it's first, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe second, but that the Antichrist, it would be, it's a lot of Antichrists in the world already that don't believe in Jesus Christ. They have the Antichrist spirit. People who don't believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior have the Antichrist spirit. Because if you don't have the spirit of God, you have the Antichrist spirit in these last days. And, but it's an actual capital. You see, those, those are spelled with a, a, a lowercase a. It's Antichrist spirit. It's Antichrist, A, capital A, in, yeah, anti N A A N T I Cap yeah. What I'm telling you is that he is a one person, a person that is the devil's son. See the devil has a counterfeit for everything that God has, the devil has also. And what I mean by that is he's a the devil is a counterfeit. He wants to be like God. So he God has a kingdom, so the devil makes his he makes him a kingdom. His kingdom is based off of this earth because he can't rules the spiritual world. You know what I'm saying? God rules. God rules it all, but God has let the devil be the prince of demons, the prince of this world, and he has control over it. He said to Jesus, I give you everything, everything in the whole world. You just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, come on, you know that there's only, I only, you only, everybody in the world should only worship the one true God. That's God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. He has been revealed to us in the last days. We have, we know who the Savior is. We know who the Messiah is. We have this holy Bible that no, if, if, if somebody made this stuff up, they would have to themselves be God. That's what y'all, that's what I'm telling y'all. That's how deep this goes. That's how deep this word is. If the person who wrote it would have to be God. Nobody is this wise. Ask anybody, do you know, do y'all know anybody, that people that talk like this? And I mean... Not like this. Not like Jesus, especially. Jesus is on a whole nother level. Those prophets are on another level because they're speaking, God is speaking through them to the people. And it's, amaz it's an amazing thing. Jesus is God walking here as a man, in man form. Jesus Christ, Ooh, the second member of the, the Holy Trinity, of the Holy, the Holy One True God. And then the Holy Spirit, God, also, because they said, um, Peter in Acts, he said, you lied to the Holy Spirit, and you have you, you lied to God. That's who you lied to. He was saying that the Holy Spirit was God, also. You understand? So we go off of this holy, this holy Bible, 
and Jesus is God. In the beginning, the Word was with God, the Word was God. In the beginning, now does, does it sound similar? Because in Genesis, in the beginning, we made them in our image, made the humans in our image. You understand? That's what that language is. Our, us, us, we, we. It's from the beginning. God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. It's from the beginning. It hasn't changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's right, man. The ones who believe in Jesus Christ will be taken. The ones who don't believe in Jesus Christ will be left. And it's as simple as that. We can't sugarcoat anything. If we were, we wouldn't be real. You understand? So that's what I'm talking about. So uh, let's see here. So two men, two... <clears throat> So if you're in the bed, two will be in the bed, one will be taken up in the rapture, up in the clouds, and uh, with our Lord to be with him forever. The other will be sleeping and will be left to be with the seven-year tribulation, uh, left in the seven-year tribulation that's ran by the Revelation chapter 13, Antichrist, the beast out of the sea, with this false prophet. They have set up this statue that has to, that they're going to walk, that you will have to worship or you're going to be beheaded. Uh, to the last person's blood is shed in this seven year tribulation, which is the, uh, the Christians that, that do, the ones who do, uh, that don't believe at first, but then they decide to believe uh, in the seven year tribulation. They're chosen still, and they, uh, they get their salvation. Um, and let's see here. So, uh, two women will be grinding flour together at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. The one will be taken to heaven, one will be left here on earth for the seven year tribulation to be martyred if you do want to go to heaven. Lord. Yeah, right. Lord, where will this be? Where will this, Lord, where will this happen? The disciples asked. Jesus replied, just as the gathering of vultures show there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. So, him coming, Jesus coming himself, and being our savior and dying on the cross was the beginning. That was that was that was that was the mark of the end. The end is near. But uh, let's go to uh, Luke chapter twenty-one. Jesus foretells the future. Cause I read Mark chapter thirteen. I read that in the prayer for Haiti. Um, and again, uh, in the birth pains, um, at the end, of the beginning of the end, birth pains. And I've read Matthew chapter 20. Me and Marcus, um, we've had the, the the Matthew chapter 24 Bible study already on here. So now I'm going to Luke. This is so that's the you know all three gospels have the same storyline in them. And now I went to Luke chapter uh, chapter 17. That gave you a, a foresight, and this is going to give you even more of an explanation in Luke. Um, Jesus foretells the future. This is uh, this is. Luke chapter 21, verse 5 through 38. Some of, uh, you know what, because I want y'all to know, know what's being humble, so I want to read from the beginning of, of, of Luke chapter 21, because I want y'all to understand what being humble is. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people putting their gifts into the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two pennies. I assure you, he said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their sur surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. Now, it's just the difference between, you know, these people are rich, the people that's rich, you know, they look amazing to the outside people, you know, but you really don't know their heart. God knows their heart, and he knows that they have so much money that even if they drop a, you know, a small percentage of that, or, you know, and give it, and it's going to look good on them to the people, but, you know, they really just doing it just not out of their heart, love for God, you know, and to, to help people and serve people, but uh, for more actually for acclaim and um, praise for men instead of God, and that's what, that's where the heart comes into, into play, but the woman was